Structure 8 over 1 is the first structure in mile 8 of the 28-mile Big 80 Night transmission line. This line traverses the states of Oregon and Washington in the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. Structures 7 over 4 and 7 over 5 are on the south side of the Columbia River, a few miles east of the Dalles, Oregon. Structure 8 over 1 is north of the river on the Washington side. We placed a time-lapse camera near the site, taking one photo every two minutes. One second of video equals one hour of work in real time. In the next few minutes, you'll see Wilson Construction crews build a full tension, double circuit, double dead end turning structure from the ground up. In this first segment, we're in the state of Washington looking south-southeast as subcontractor Malcolm Drilling excavates for the installation of four pier foundations. Each pier foundation supports one leg of the tower. Each foundation was over 8 feet in diameter and at least 33 feet deep. That's about 73 cubic yards of concrete per foundation. These footings were built into solid basalt rock. First, a 6-inch rock drill was used to punch through the rock. Then we brought in a Bauer BG-40 to finish the drilling. The BG-40 is a beastly 170-ton, 580-horsepower machine that produces more than a quarter of a million foot-pounds of torque. The excavation spanned 49 calendar days with 32 actual work days. We didn't include nighttime photos, so you're seeing 32 days of work in the space of 53 seconds. Next, let's watch as Wilson Cruz build a lattice steel tower. Looking across the Columbia River toward Oregon, you can see structures 7 over 4 and 7 over 5. 7 over 5 is the taller one at 420 feet in height. It was built using 167 tons of steel. It takes a highly qualified lineman 45 minutes to descend a 420-foot tower safely. The steel pieces in the foreground will be assembled by bolting the pieces together, then lifting the assembled sections into place to erect the structure. The distance from structure 7 over 5 to structure 8 over 1 is 4,790 feet, crossing the mighty Columbia River. That's about nine-tenths of a mile. Structure 8 over 1 is over 240 feet tall, made of more than 200 tons of steel. With the transmission line installed across the river, this structure is capable of withstanding close to a million and a half pounds of tension. The main heavy lift crane is a Tadano 220. This crane is capable of lifting 500 tons. With cranes, however, lifting and working are two different things. Closer to the chassis, a crane can lift much more than when the boom is extended at an angle to a working position. Let's watch the final assembly of Structure 8 over 1 from a different vantage point. The Tadano crane is the taller one right next to the structure. Although the Tadano can lift 500 tons, the farther that load is from the chassis, the smaller that load has to be. At a distance of 110 feet, this crane can work 20 tons to a height of 196 feet. This view from camera 2 is still in Washington facing south-southeast toward Oregon across the Columbia River. The river is 3,000 feet wide at this point, a little over half a mile. Before the Dalles Dam was built, Celilo Falls would have been just to the left of the center of this view. Crews attach a 33-foot extender so the crane can reach the top of the tower. The assembly and erection of this tower spanned 22 workdays. At the top of the tower, 240 feet above the ground, there's a platform with a walking grate and handrails. In this next segment, Wilson crews string wire across the Columbia River. A helicopter starts the wire stringing process by pulling and placing a strong lightweight rope or sock line. The sock line is then used to pull in a larger hard line, which is then used to pull in the conductor. Just in case you missed it, 
That was the helicopter pulling in the sock line. Let's watch that again in slow motion. The red arrow points to the Wilson helicopter crossing the river. Now let's cross the river and watch that again in real time from the Oregon side. We're looking northeast into Washington from the south side of the Columbia River. One red arrow indicates the Wilson helicopter and the other arrow points out the location of one of our time-lapse cameras. Zooming in, you can see the helicopter to the left of the tower, pulling sock line to seat it into a traveler suspended from the left end of the second set of tower arms. Typically, the helicopter can seat the sock line in the traveler without help. Here, you can see a crew in a bucket atop the crane boom extended toward the traveler. Crews helped out because the span was so long. The shimmer in this shot is due to air pockets of different temperatures moving slowly over the land and the river. The high-level zoom on the camera amplifies this shimmer effect. The camera is almost a mile away and in another state. Oh, that's great. This procedure may seem slow, but it's one of the fastest moving parts of the wire pulling process. Now let's speed this up to four times the actual speed. Returning to time-lapse mode and our vantage point on the Washington side of the river, now Wilson crews are pulling in the new conductor. On the left, you can see when the hard line is replaced with larger diameter conductor. The new conductor is a special aluminum alloy conductor steel reinforced cable, or AACSR. It's close to two inches in diameter and a one foot length weighs two and a half pounds. There are 18 conductors in this span, arranged in bundles of three, with a combined weight of nearly 300,000 pounds. Once again, on the left side, in a moment you'll see the hard line replaced with conductor. This is the sagging operation. Each conductor is pulled to a tension of about 24,000 pounds. With 18 conductors, this results in about 432,000 pounds of strain on structures 8 over 1 and 7 over 4. Wind and ice can increase the strain on these towers to well over a million pounds. After pulling conductors to the correct tension, the dead-ending crew secures them to dead-end assembly insulators and hardware. This completes the circuits across the river for the west side of the tower. Now Wilson crews work on the east side of the tower, which is the downwind side, to repeat the entire process for the remaining nine conductors. Again, one second of video equals one hour of work in real time. Pulling the conductor over the river took 39 work days. Pulling and sagging wire are done in reverse order up and down the tower. Typically crews pull the lowest wire in first, then work their way up the tower. When sagging, they add tension to the conductors starting with the highest ones and work their way down to the bottom. The lowest wire is pulled in first because of the helicopter. 
Once it pulls a sock line in, it can't string another one below it. This particular site presented a unique challenge during wire stringing. On most projects, all of the sock line can be pulled and then the helicopter is done. The Columbia River Gorge, however, is known for frequent high winds which can damage sock line in a matter of hours. For that reason, the conductor had to be pulled across the river as soon as possible after the helicopter pulled the sock line. Here's why conductor is tensioned from the top of the tower to the bottom when sagging. If the lowest conductor is tensioned first, it would be pulled up high enough to contact the conductor above it. For the final step of the river crossing, two OPGW static wires are pulled and dead-ended at the tower. Notice the linemen working on the platform at the top of the tower. The OPGW static wires are the highest ones on the tower, where they provide protection from lightning strikes. With the six conductor bundles spaced and the fiber and static pulled, the river crossing is complete. On the left, the first tower you see is structure 9 over 1, meaning structure 1 in mile 9 of the transmission line. This structure is northeast of structure 8 over 1 on the Washington side, heading away from the river. Now, Wilson crews start on the final section, stringing wire from structure 8 over 1 uphill to structure 10 over 1. The work in this section is completed much faster because the spans are shorter and crews can pull three conductors at once. Note once again that wire stringing is completed on one side of the tower before starting on the other side. The camera was attacked by bees and wasps. However, no insects or photographers were harmed. Once the final conductor bundle is strung, Wilson clipping and spacer crews finish up by clipping in the conductor and installing spacers. This successfully completes the project. Here are some aerial views of the work sites on the Oregon side of the river. This is structure 8 over 1 in Washington. Thanks for watching. For more videos and information, please visit our website at www.wilsonconst.com.